Reading sisters and brothers, Milton Alimadi, publisher of Black Star News, adjunct professor of African history at John Jay College here in New York City. I greet fellow Pan-Africans all over the world. I greet sisters and brothers in Uganda. Um, I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about today's interview, today, September the 12th, on uh, Straight Talk Africa, Shaka Sali's show on The Voice of America. Today's guest, Robert Kiagulani, a.k.a. Bobby Wine, the victim of brutal torture by the Special Forces Command, which, of course, is a specialized part of the military, which is assigned to protect Uganda's dictator of 32 years, General Yoweri Museveni. And the other guest was Amul Sebuja Katende, Uganda's ambassador uh, to Washington, D.C., to the United States. Now, sisters and brothers, <laughs> anybody who did not watch this interview should go online to VOA's website and Straight Talk Africa and please watch that interview because the performance by this ambassador, Ambassador Katende, it was so terrible that it confirms everything that the youth in Uganda have been saying that General Museveni's generation really need to depart the scene and allow the young people to really seize their destiny and emerge into leadership and governance in Uganda. And we can do that by ending the 32-year dictatorship of General Yoweri Museveni. And one way we can do it is by continuing to apply pressure to the countries that give Museveni arms and trains his army the United States. The United States should stop interfering in Uganda's politics by arming dictator General Yoweri Museveni. Let Ugandans determine their own destiny. You see, Museveni has not won the last four elections, but so long as he controls the army, he ignores the results. Ugandans know, of course, that in 2016, Dr. Kiza Besije won, just like he won three previous elections. But so long as Museveni commands the army and he knows the U.S. will support him, he will ignore the outcome of the elections. And that's why we must continue stressing that the United States and the United Kingdom stop providing military weapons and support for dictator General Yoweri Museveni. 32 years is more than enough destruction of one country. And by the way, the weapons have not only brutalized Ugandans, our neighbors in East and Central Africa. Had Uganda not invaded Rwanda in 1990, it's quite possible the genocide of 1994 would never have occurred. Uganda invaded Congo multiple times, causing multiple wars, leading to the deaths of more than 6 million Congolese. The International Court of Justice has already found Uganda liable and ordered $10 billion compensation. The ICC also started an investigation, which was blocked. Hopefully, that investigation can continue. And now I understand the Congolese government, after Kabila, will seek to enforce that $10 billion judgment. Where is that money going to come from? We hope our Congolese sisters and brothers understand that this was not an aggression by Uganda. Ugandans are peace-loving people and love our sisters and brothers in the Congo. This was a Museveni enterprise. So if possible, go after his personal assets, him and Sam Kutesa. You know, they've stolen billions of dollars. These monies can be found and take the judgment from that money. But now let me make a few brief comments on today's VOA Street Talk Africa interview. First of all, the ambassador said the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. <laughs> he said torture is a technicality. Bobby Wine described how he was tortured, beaten with iron bars, his testicles squeezed with some sort of instruments. Ambassador Katende, if you were beaten by iron bar, if your private parts, your genitals were squeezed by some objects, would that be technical or would that be torture? That is my question to you. 
he owes Bobby Wine <laughs> an apology. But Bobby Wine can defend himself too. He did very well. First of all, he quoted from Norbert Mao. He said, well, if you are paid to be a fool, what else can you be? That was his rejoinder. And I thought that was appropriate without getting too angry. Because be, imagine, you are the victim of a torture and you have a so-called ambassador sitting next to you and suggesting that you flew all the way from, the Uganda, from Uganda to the United States and went to a hospital even though you did not sustain any major injury. Ambassador, you can be Bobby Wine's grandfather. How could you say something like that? I hope you will call him and apologize or issue a statement. Or if you want to write something, we'll be more than happy to publish it on the Black Star News with your apology. Let me go to one other point that the ambassador kept going back to. That General Museveni won by 60%. That is false. That is completely untrue. Why? Because General Museveni appoints the election commissioners and they manufacture these figures from thin air. It could have been proven if it was correct. Dr. Kiza Besige, who many believe won those elections, urged and demanded for an audit. General Museveni declined. That audit can still be done today if the ambassador and his boss, Dictator Museveni, really want to prove that he won by 60%, which even he himself knows not to be true. And let, them, let me just say one other very interesting point that the ambassador made. And I must thank the ambassador. You know, Shaka Sali said the last time a Ugandan ambassador came to the show was 2001. And now we can see why. <laughs> because based on this ambassador's performance today, Bobby Wine did not even have to say anything. You would have just allowed the ambassador to speak and prove to the world why the youth really want Museveni's generation to leave the scene. But anyway, this is one other very interesting point that Ambassador Katende said. When a discussion on the age limit removal and the term limit removal came. Shaka reminded him that in order to remove term limits, the members of parliament were bribed, as they were bribed to remove the age limit as well. What did the ambassador say? He did not deny it. <laughs> he said it cannot be proven. That was his best defense. That to me is acknowledging and accepting that bribes were paid. And we've been making that point for a very long time. The so-called removal of the age limit was null and void. Bribes are illegal in Uganda and everywhere in the world. So the outcome of a bribe cannot be something which is legal. You cannot steal something and then somehow manipulate the law and say you did not steal. No. If you were bribed to take a certain action, that was a criminal act, meaning you voted criminally and unlawfully. So the age limit removal was actually null and void. And now the ambassador is actually confirming <laughs> that even the term limit <laughs> removal apparently was null and void. He's not denying that there was bribe. Anyway, I don't want to go to the detail of the whole presentation. I think people should go and watch for themselves and make their own analysis. But the ambassador's performance was brilliant in confirming to the, to the world that truly Museveni's generation needs to depart the scene. The youth in Uganda, after all, are more than 80% of the population. Youth unemployment is 85%. Let's not wait for things to get out of hand with an explosion of youth on the street. Uganda, we should really be moving towards a transition away from Museveniism. Thank you, sisters and brothers. Stay strong. I salute all of you. And I urge you all to go and watch that interview on Shakasali Street Talk Africa if you haven't watched it yet. 
May the Creator protect you and your family. Thank you.